he's into like all strongman stuff as well, mm. like nail bending and all this mm. kind of like stuff like that. What's well, nail bending? Like bending nail, metal nails, like thick, what, like just yeah, yeah, in yeah. your hands. It's a sport, really. <laughs> <laughs> nail bending. Welcome to the Swifty Podcast, inspiring positive change through design, innovation, and technology. Hi, welcome to the podcast. Today is guest number two. I'm really excited about this. This is Adam, Adam Adshead. He is my jiu-jitsu instructor. And you might well be thinking, why are we going to be talking about jiu-jitsu? Well, we are going to be talking about jiu-jitsu because Adam runs a really cool company. Uh, he's built it from nothing in 10 years, Yeah, 10 years or so. Um, he's pretty innovative in his approach, um, from cryotherapy to all sorts of sports, training, injury, rehab, and obviously the jiu-jitsu itself. So we're going to talk about how he's built his company, um, and I guess what jiu-jitsu is and, uh, what the future holds. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, welcome. Uh, so should we start with what jiu-jitsu is? Okay. So jiu-jitsu is, um, kind of a combination. If you look at two very kind of familiar Olympic sports, so judo and wrestling. Mm -hmm. And what Brazilian jiu-jitsu is, is kind of a combination of the two. So we use a lot of the takedown and a lot of the um, kind of pinning aspects of wrestling and judo, and then a lot of the submission aspects of judo and kind of combine it all. And over the last 100 years or so, it's kind of evolved into a sport which is now heavily kind of... Uh, um, uh, kind of, uh, we use a lot of competitions. There's a lot of things going on globally and nationally, and uh, and yeah, like like you say, your children train at my school, which is awesome, and they've been doing a really really good job. Uh, and now you're training here yeah. as, uh, at my place as well. So yeah, it's uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu still has a core of self defense, mm -hmm. and as you know, like that's we do kind of make sure we focus on that with the kids. The adult classes are a lot more about sport Jiu Jitsu. Um, but again, it, uh, f from my point of view, it's, it's, it's good to have a kind of a blend of the two. So, yeah. okay. So yeah. So that's it's quite a lot of people at the club that compete, right? Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where it's, I think every club, there's always going to be a smaller amount of people that compete. Right. Um, it's always in the, in the minority, mm -hmm. but I think as the club gl grows, like if it's 25% of the club competing, then suddenly a hundred members become 200 and it seems like there's a lot more people competing. Like it yeah. seems like it's a lot of people. How but, many is there now in the club? Um, I, I think it's hard to put a finger on it. I think at least I'd say probably a couple of hundred. I oh, think, wow. I okay. Think. Um, and then, and then, you know, quite a lot of kids as well. Yeah, there's a lot of kids. So that Saturday class last week was your biggest ever kids class, right? Yeah, I mean, on the Saturday, you know, we can we can, we can can get through a lot, mm -hmm. like a, a lot of uh, uh, different people. So mm -hmm. we start with a two-year-old, we do two to five-year-olds, and then we have like kids in the middle, like, which is your lot, so yep. like six to 10, and yep. then teenagers. Then we have like the adults uh, who are joining, so introductory classes, and we have the regular class, then we have all the sparring. So. Um, yeah, last Saturday was w was one of our busiest, and I think we clocked it at like 120 something. Wow. Like that. So like 120 different people. Like wow. I taught jujitsu to on that day from start to finish, from two year old two year old to 57, mm -hmm. which is our oldest member at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's definitely kind of growing, and uh, it's great to to uh, well to be invited onto something like this to talk about oh, thanks. Jiu -jitsu, you know. Yeah, no, well, I, I'm a big fan. I love it. It's great. It's really, um, it's helped me in loads of ways, like mm -hmm. just being able to train and forget everything mm -hmm. for an hour. It's just awesome. Running a business, being busy, um, obviously being physical is also a great benefit. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to squeeze those sessions in. Mm. So, um, the timing is great. So, Seven o'clock class is brilliant. Yeah. Um, because I can still get home, see the kids, kind of do that bit and then head off and have mm -hmm. you know, an hour and a half, two hours. And then on the Saturday, that open mat, which was yeah. my first open mat <laughs> last week. <laughs> oh my lord, I was so sore on Sunday. So because I didn't stop, I just yeah rolled. You did good you did a good job. So <laughs> for those listening, um an open mat is a, essentially a sparring session, huge sparring session. So we kind of run a lot of these throughout the week. Um, and it gives the guys a chance to be able to, we call it rolling, which is, is the kind of the, the terminology for sparring. Yeah. Gives you a chance to roll with 
um, not only your peers and your like similar level people, but like all the way up to the coaches. And I yeah. know we had a little yeah, round. Yeah, we rolled, yeah. I think uh, two or three, two or three rounds. And... Um, <laughs> Chew me every time. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's what becomes very quickly one of your people, people's favorite class of the week. Yeah. Because like you said, you know, for that hour or, or however long it is, almost like nothing else exists. You know, like jujitsu is great for that because it's problem solving and it's trying to figure out like good or bad like you may be in a bad position you got to try and work out of it you try yeah. to you know pass somebody's guard or take somebody down and you've got to try and solve that kind of puzzle um yeah i dream about it yeah. i've been dreaming about yeah. the moves and how i've been caught and like what to do and then you're like googling and looking at youtube till you know yeah, midnight exactly. in yeah. bed yeah <laughs> and camilla's like what, what are you doing <laughs> on your phone <laughs> watching jiu-jitsu videos <laughs> yeah. that's that's kind of like a common theme with with people they get they get bitten by the bug quite quickly and i think once you start enjoy, enjoying the sparring part of it um it's hard to uh hard to get away from that I think. yeah the sparring's great um, yeah. i've been really surprised because i was a little bit nervous i will be honest to yeah. begin with mm -hmm. it's quite intimidating to go Very. into a room yeah. of like 30 plus men who yeah. are all pretty good at what they do <laughs> and uh somehow get on that mat and think you're gonna do all right mm -hmm. but everyone's so friendly yeah and i've heard this so many times before you know how it's kind of like really welcoming and it's like the way that everyone kind of touches hands afterwards and shakes hands afterwards and it's that's awesome to be able to go into a situation where it's it's that kind of you get that bit of a fight or flight response mm -hmm. so your adrenaline goes and um but it's in a really controlled fashion. Yeah. Like having that dose every week, yeah. it's really good for you. And it's addictive. <laughs> yeah, it's really addictive, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And, <laughs> and it's not just the, you know, the uh, the endorphins and the adrenaline. I, I do feel like because it's a, it's a never ending puzzle, even for me, and I've been training almost 16 years now. And like, wow. for me, I, I still feel like there's improvements to be made and I feel like there's areas of my game that need to be, yeah. to be worked on. Um, and I'm kind of fortunate enough that I can do that every day, you know, yeah. and that's why I am on the mat every day, you know, seven days a week. And, and yeah. pretty much the only thing that stops me is, uh, you know, illness, injury and uh, <laughs> other commitments like uh, my girlfriend kind of uh, <laughs> telling me to take a day off and, and <laughs> do something a little bit more normal. I'd, so. I'd train every day if I could. I mean, it's it's really tough to get two sessions in. But you, you, you need to get some of the staff here involved and get some mats. Yeah. So you got space. And yeah. Uh, so you up for it? <laughs> Open a little school here. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, <laughs> little lunchtime classes. <laughs> so why why don't we um, why don't we start with um, or, or roll on to uh, roll on? That was a bad pun, wasn't it? <laughs> Move on to like how you started because you got okay. a really interesting background, <clears throat> being a music journalist. Yep. Um, so why don't you take take us through that? Okay. So um, so yeah. So the closest thing I've ever had to a real job. Is, is being a music journalist. Right. Um, you know, I kind of finished university and, uh, well, even before I finished university, I did a degree in business information systems. Uh, it kind of bored the hell out of me. And like in the last year, I was thinking rather than kind of doing this, what can I do elsewhere that's going to essentially stimulate right. uh, my mind? And I'd already started jujitsu at that point. Maybe I was like around a year in. So I loved that, but... You know, back then there was there was no way that there was any scope for being able to do this professionally. Right. Um, all the gyms that were around, which was only a handful, were doing it as hobbies. You know. Right. In mills and in kind of like leisure centers. Was and, that BJJ as well? So Brazilian. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, well, the way I, the way I started was essentially it was one of those things where. Uh, like everything it's like someone recommends it and I, I yeah. was working in retail at the time um, and I was still at university and someone someone recommended it uh, they'd found a club and it took me a long time to go like he was about maybe six months ahead of me at the time it oh, took right. me a long time to pluck up the courage to do it because I was in the same position as, as you were like walking into martial arts having never done it before you know I'd never done any other martial arts before it was mm -hmm. very daunting and mm -hmm. um, I decided to eventually I ran out of excuses like, <laughs> and then just bit the bullet and then took uh, took my first class and that was in Stockport. Um, but it was it wasn't gi, it was it was no gi. So ah, right. so it was actually um, what's kind of known as like submission wrestling or submission fighting. Okay. Um, and back then, yeah, the, the gym was called Stockport Submission Fighting. 
and it was a uh, yeah just a, a very small local gym they decided to you know uh, uh branch out eventually to do the gi classes and right. i kind of fell in love a lot more with the gi which mm-hmm. is kind of brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah but you know like it's very similar sports you got grass court tennis you got clay court tennis like still tennis mm-hmm. but if you're into tennis like there's probably very different kind of like yeah. subtleties to each totally. kind of side of the sport yeah. Same with like BJJ and mm-hmm. like submission wrestling. Um, so yeah, so I, I kind of started that and, you know, I always enjoyed doing that, but there was no way, I, I, even then, like I didn't think it would ever be a career for me, but the one thing I did like was music and I enjoyed writing a little bit, even though I didn't even like, I think I got like a C in like GCSE English. I never did English at university or anything like that, but I kind of, uh, started writing for local blogs and fanzines and things like that right. about music. And I'd right. go to gigs and do reviews and then I kind of worked my way up from there. So ended up in a position where um, I kind of blagged work experience at NME, which is a, <laughs> a, a magazine in um, in London. Yeah, uh, I was I had to like fake the let- a letter from university saying I was at university still because they'd only take university. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but they took it. Yeah. And then I did a couple, I did uh, two work experience slots there, started in the freelance pool and then worked my way up and then I ended up working for them full time. Um, and then I did that for a few years. And I was kind of, it was kind of great timing for me because it allowed me to work like late at night, Mm -hmm. you know, so I'd be doing reviews or I go to late night gigs and stuff. I go to gigs after training. Oh, wow. So I'd finish teaching at night. Wow. And I literally come straight into Manchester, go to gigs, you know, do interviews, do reviews, stay up late at night, like, you know, writing things up and then... Get in your bag. Pretty much. Off you go. Yeah, pretty much. So it worked really well for me because the journalism was, uh, and music is still a great passion for me. Mm. And... um, it allowed me to kind of earn a little bit of money and it would support like my lifestyle for jujitsu. So it was kind of a perfect blend. It was at the time it was like, I couldn't pick between the two. Right. Okay. You know, jujitsu was, 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 um, uh, always kind of a passion for me, but I never saw it as it being ever a, a thing we c- I could ever do as a job. Were you, were you just training then? You weren't um, teaching? Yeah, um, no, actually I, I, I at that point I, I we, I was I was running factory. Oh, yeah. you're running factory. Yeah. Oh, so you still in the early days. Oh, right. In so the you're early still, days. Okay. You know, so like it was about ten years ago. So right. okay. as kind of both of those start to grow, mm. it got to a point where I kind of had to pick. Had to choose. Yeah, mm. and I was fortunate because I kind of like lost my job like as a journalist because sweet with the, <laughs> so I had no <laughs> I had no like uh, decision to make because the magazine industry was just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking I was working as a correspondent from from up north right and the choice was to either like reapply and re-interview for a job in the offices in London okay or go back in the freelance pool and like start hustling for work all the time so we had this passion yeah and I was fortunate that the gym was like, it was busy enough, it, grow, it, it had grown enough that I was able to then go, do you know what, actually, I can just do, do jiu-jitsu now. Okay. So I remember like, th- there was some points, I've always kind of burnt the candle at both ends and and I remember like covering the Brit Awards one time and but um, my like editor was at the show and like he was like sending me messages and like quotes of people and photographs and all this kind of stuff. And then I had my laptop at the side of the mats <laughs> and I was like putting it on the enemy website. Oh, wow. Like, you know, writing up the stuff, like cool. who, who won the award and what they said. And here's a picture. And then teaching the next move. Oh, wow. You know, or, you know, I, I, and it was at that point, it was like, I'm too busy to be doing both yeah. now. So yeah. it, it was a blessing in disguise, really, that I was able to then transition across. But I kind of feel like there's always things to take from. Uh, whatever you do and I think my, my time as a journalist and my time as a uh, you know um, a freelancer especially has helped me kind of running my own business so right, okay. I took a lot from that mm-hmm. and um, I mean being it, independent already yeah I think so I mean also kind of like you know just just kind of promoting yourself as a as a journalist and hustling for work you have to do that all the time yeah and, and um and then obviously running a business uh, uh, and a gym, now it's the same deal, like trying to like use social media and use kind of like um, different channels to be able to to promote what we're doing yeah. uh, as a gym, as a brand, 
to be able to get more customers and, and, and spread the spread the good word of jiu-jitsu. Well, it's working because it's always really busy and it's yeah. great to see it and it's great to see the camaraderie there between people mm-hmm. and how they love it. They obviously love it. And uh, I've, I'm, I'm the same. I love it. It's great. It's good. It's, it's awesome. Um, so what's uh, I, I, one thing that I wanted to talk about bringing you on was um, some of the different things you've diversified into. Mm-hmm. And one thing in particular is the cryotherapy, yep. um, which is really interesting because I, I have personally suffered with quite a lot of inflammation type mm-hmm. problems. Um, um, I have a uh, gluten intolerance as well. Mm-hmm. And I believe any kind of cold treatment really helps that. Yeah. Um, so for people that don't know or, or are listening, why don't you explain <clears throat> what cryotherapy is and what, and why you actually diversified? Yeah. So, I mean, firstly, I think, I think any business, like you have to constantly evolve what you're doing and be looking at different options and different kind of avenues for, for not only for rep from a revenue point of view, but also just to like diversify you as a, as a business and as a brand, because the problem is, is that there's always going to be people who are going to pop up and be competitive to you yeah. like, and, and, and potentially, um, you know, a new person looking at, at, at uh, several different brands or several different gyms or whatever they're always looking for a slight kind of edge on on, on why they should choose one over another so yeah and the history of jiu-jitsu has yeah. got a very famous history of the graces yeah, and the, that's right the fallout of the family and yeah. the division i mean that's just a, it's, that's a saga isn't it really there's yeah. so, so much has happened so much has happened and and in a relatively short period of time really mm. like the history of jiu-jitsu is is um like say it's, it's relatively relatively new martial art you know in terms mm. of in terms of what the Gracies did and and and, um, and how they kind of grew the sport and um, but I think it's just whatever whatever you do and the same with you guys here with your business it's like I think it's important to diversify what you do because um, one it helps keep things fresh as well like yeah. you know two it kind of future proofs you like because you just don't know if your core business is going to always be sustainable and and, yeah. and, and going to give you the same revenues and the same kind of, um, you know, customer base that you've always had. Um, and, and for me, like the cryotherapy was, was just something which I thought would be a good addition to what we do, not only to try and differentiate us from other gyms, but also to provide a service to our customers, you know, yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is, I remember a long time ago, not too long ago, but somebody said to me, like, it was at like a party or something. They said, oh, you know, what would you do, what would you do if you won the lottery? You mm. know, and like my day would not change mm. if I won the lottery because mm. um, I've essentially, I kind of n- knew for, for a while, like what I would do if money was no object. And I've just trying to, over the years, try to slowly like move towards where, what that would be. Yep. So rather than waiting for the lottery win. Yep. I've like taken small steps to try and get to, to that position. Um, do it yourself. Do it yourself. Yeah. And the thing is for me, like um, ha- having kind of diversification with the business is, is, a, is a good way to do that. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's one of them where I'm not like money hungry and, and, and you know, I, I don't keep a track of all that side of things. I, I feel like I let my accountant do that because I feel like if you're offering a good service and you're offering a good uh, products like that's that's all that matters the like, money will come the money will come the yeah. customers will come you can yep. you can provide that so cryotherapy is uh, um essentially cold cold therapy for for helping with inflammation helping with um kind of manage post-surgery manage with skin issues like there's so many different kind of benefits helps with kind of sleep and things and um, so i started trying this out i've always tried to do different things to help with my training. So there's only so many hours a day that I can train. Mm. And as I get older, like, I feel like I will want to future, pu- future proof and sustain like my, and keep my body in shape as long as possible. Yeah. So, you know, I try and eat right, you know, I try and sleep right. I try and train right and recover and, you know, do all these different things. And somebody suggested cryotherapy for me. So there was a, a place I used to go to um, over in Altrincham and they uh, yeah they have a cryo chamber 
for those who don't know, it's like a fully kind of immersed. So imagine like a spray tan booth. That's what a lot of people like <laughs> have kind of said it looks like, <laughs> which is interesting because it's mostly guys that say that. So at some point they must have had a spray tan or something. But um, so you. Uh, your head's just above it, so it's your whole body is in it. Yeah. And it, we use liquid nitrogen to cool the air that you're standing in. And it's three minutes, you get a nice cold blast. We take you down to like minus 120, one, one, minus 130. Um, and it's great. It's, it's, it's a really invigorating experience. Hmm. Like I say, it helps with all those aches and pains of training. And we've had some great success with it. So, um, yeah, so I decided to, to, to look into purchasing uh, a unit uh, earlier this year and we've had our one for around uh, 10 or 11 weeks now so it's still right. quite new yep. for us um, but this, it's been really successful and we've had a, a lot of um, interest not only from people in our sport but from outside of that so it's nice to be able to provide that for people because um, there aren't that many options for cryotherapy in, in, in Manchester at the moment Right, uh, and at the same time if we can kind of maybe cross over and get people interested in, in training yeah then that's also a huge plus as well. And, and we have, we've not had anybody commit to it yet, but we have had people who have arrived for cryotherapy, realize what we do, have an awareness of what we do. And, you know, we give them a card and, and hopefully some of them are going to end up kind of training with us at some point because it's, uh, it's a good way to kind of cross over between, yeah. you know, maybe managing an injury or helping mm -hmm. with skin issues or, or whatever. And then now, Suddenly, you've got a. What are the, a, a what are the skin issues it can help with? Um, like dermatite, any kind of like oh, psoriasis, right. dermatitis type oh. things. So oh. eczema, things like oh, that. Right, I didn't realise. So yeah, they okay. they use that a lot. So we've had oh. people in who've had like bad eczema, and then they have a bunch of treatments, and it helps with it. It kind of helps with the. Well, it's essentially inflammation of the skin. Yeah. Okay. So anything that's inflammation based, whether it's muscular or skin based or whatever, mm -hmm. like uh, we're having having kind of people kind of like say booking in for all various yeah. kind of things so so the, the science behind it is kind of like um your your body goes into an autoimmune response is that right and yeah it, essentially like you know you you, you your body is obviously that cold that it, it, it kind of triggers the thermoreceptors in the skin to say, look, we're freezing to death here, right? <laughs> let's, let's get all the blood. Let's kind of flood the, uh, the, um, you know, the internal organs and stuff, get everything back to the core, uh, to protect it. Ah, so okay. then obviously then after you get out of the chamber and you naturally start to warm up, all that kind of nutrient rich blood and that fresh blood is then pumped back to the extremities. Ah. And that's why you feel good. And that's where you start to be able to manage uh, inflammation and, and, and things a lot quicker and a lot more efficiently. Right. So, so, so you're getting, uh, you're getting a, a, an, in, an increase in blood flow, you'd say? Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, okay. it's a, it, which essentially tricking the body. It's like a biohack. Right. So, you know, like a lot of that, like, um, a lot of that can be done with like cold showers and like yep. ice baths and things like that. I've done some cold showers recently. Yeah. And uh, 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 the reason why I did a cold shower in the morning is because our boiler's on the, on the blink. On the blink, yeah. And you got to go downstairs to reset it. <laughs> so and the other morning I was like, this is, ju uh, this is just like, this is karma. Like I've got to do it now. Mm. So I got in and actually it wasn't that bad. Like, yeah. As long as you control your breathing, mm -hmm. then it's okay. It's, it's all right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the big thing is with any kind of cold therapy is the fact is that it's different, you know, and I think it's different to the norm. And, you know, I like anything like that where you have to like step outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, that's why I like, I compete. That's why, mm -hmm. you know, I do what I do. That's why I take risk with business and diversify what we do because yeah. I think ultimately, I mean, I'm a competitive person and I like the the thrill and the, and the, and the, um, the kind of challenge of doing something different. So I started in the same way. Like we had a, uh, we had two workshops with a Wim Hof instructor. Oh, right. So Emma, yeah, she came over a couple of times and we did, we did all the breathing, yeah. like, and all the, uh, breathing exercises and then all the, uh, ice bath kind of t type stuff. So she had, had, came to the gym. We did it at the gym. Like we had this big birthing pool. Oh, right. We filled it with like 80 kilos of ice. Wow. And you have to jump in and like control your breathing. Did he actually come himself no, or somebody no, else? Okay. No, It's one of, it, one of his instructors. One of his instructors. Yeah. I've seen the, it's uh, on Vice, I think it yeah. is. He did a program. Mm -hmm. That is a nuts program. Yeah. My Lord. He's, he's a great, does. he's a great person. And I think, uh, yeah, the, I've seen 
it's pretty much everything that you know on YouTube he's and done. everything about him and stuff. Okay. And he's, he's yeah, a very interesting character. And I think the way he kind of uses the cold and uses cold therapy for for in a positive way. I like the idea of that. So the, yeah. I was introduced to that with, with Emma and when she, she came over and did the workshops and then the cryotherapy was just kind of a, a kind of one up from that really. Okay. Um, and uh, It's so convenient, yeah. isn't it? It's like three very, minutes. Very convenient, yeah. Done. I've, I've done one one treatment. Yeah. Minus 125, I think <laughs> you took like me down that, to. Yeah. So I had to wear some gloves mm -hmm. and some socks. That's just it. That's stop it. Stop my little pinkies freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it'd be. I thought it'd feel a lot colder. Yeah. But you said go steady first. Mm -hmm. Just do one, two, five, and um, I need to do my next one. I'll go, yeah. I'll just go let later. us know when you want to when you want to book in. Come. Um, and, it, and it's manageable. I think the big thing is with like ice baths and even like cold showers to a degree. It takes a little bit of mental like preparation to do that you i need... think that's what i like about it though yeah i do i, I, like I agree i was in the morning i was like come on don't be a wuss get yeah. in there and my little boy was next to me and i was like i'm gonna have a cold shower son and then i regretted it i was like oh no he's like go on it. then get in <laughs> i was like oh no so i got in and i i, I really uh i got a lot out of it, the fact yeah. that i did it yeah not just that i had the cold shower but i no. did it i mean that's that's the thing and i think for me like that's what i love about jujitsu as well like um, it's just constant, uh, kind of like problem solution, problem solution. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, what it's like in business and, and, uh, or, or whatever you're doing, like sometimes a problem will take, it can take months or years even to solve, Yeah. but you get that little fix of being able to like have a problem and then be able to, to, to constantly fix it and, yeah. and, and solve it. Yeah. And so things like the cold is, is a good way to do it. And the bonus is that it, it's really good for your muscles and it's really helpful for that. So it's been a good addition to what we're doing. Um, from my research, and you know, I might be corrected wrong, might be corrected if, and it could, hopefully if people will correct me if I am wrong, we are the first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym in the world to have a cryotherapy chamber. Oh, wow. I can't find anyone anywhere, any gym that I've got has got one already. Oh, wow. So, you know, I always want to try and set new standards as well. Mm -hmm because I think it's important to the growth of the sport. Um, so if, if, if I can kind of push the way that a gym is run, then hopefully other gyms can kind of follow suit and, you know, maybe diversify what they're doing. And, uh, and it kind of helps maybe not only expose um, the sport to a, to a wider area of people, but then, you know, again, it's just, it's good healthy competition for, for the, for the, mm. for the other local gyms or national gyms. So stuff. what's the, what's the next bit of tech or next <laughs> bit of stuff that you're going to bring in? Is there anything else that um, you can tell us what's on the forefront? I've yeah. seen that you guys use the, uh, do you use the, the Theraguns, the, um, the muscle treatment? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Theragun would probably hate me for saying this, but like we, we have got a few, few guys that have them at the gym um, but they just they just made them themselves. Oh, really? You can okay. make a ghetto one. Yeah, like, I've I've got I've I bought a jigsaw jigsaw with an attachment, and on. I bought the yeah you know, on Amazon. Yeah, and it was it's like too so, easy. It's, it's too so easy. Much cheaper, the, so much they're cheaper. way louder, and yeah. the motors will burn out quicker for sure. Okay, okay. but like a Theragun's like five hundred and fifty quid. Like, I know it's expensive, but I, I do think you know we have a, a great osteopath uh, Simon Squires who who comes in every two weeks for us. He does a little workshop, uh, a little um, clinic at the gym every two weeks. Oh, I didn't know that. So you can book in with him. Ah, yeah, yeah, every every two weeks um, on a Thursday. He just he's uh, you know amazing, best person I've I've worked with in, in that respect. So he helps keep me on the on the mat, and um, I have a sports massage, and he works through like little tweaks and just regular right. like basically a regular service for me, all the tweaks and the aches and pains and stuff. Um, so I, I do feel like doing. And doing that side of it, he uses a Theragun, right? Uh, and I think it's a great bit of kit. Yeah. But for me, like, yeah, I, well, he's using it all the time, right? Yeah, it's and not something for me. Like, it's not the, something we got approached um, by someone who wanted to sell them. If we wanted to sell them at the gym, and I don't think it's something we're going to do. But, it's steep. It's a lot of money yeah. for someone to buy. I think. But yeah, I think I think I I would be interested in in, in expanding things further. Um, you know, I, I've got nothing on the horizon at the moment and um i don't know we're kind of running that space as well like we're, we're yeah. pretty full at the gym already so I know. yeah let's talk a little bit about um 
uh, you, you, we were talking earlier off camera, but you pretty much work yeah. seven days a week, <laughs> three and six, five days a, a year, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like the gym's never closed, like yeah. even on Christmas day. Yeah. So we kind of, it started <laughs> as a little bit of a joke that, um, that we were open every day. Um, and you know, I think one, one year we did a Christmas day session and you know, we do the same thing. Like we give all the money on the day to charity and, you know, we, um, oh, awesome. I think it, it, it also started because we had a few members who, you know, didn't celebrate Christmas and were away from family at Christmas oh. or, you know, kind of needed somewhere else to go, you know, yeah, okay. it can be a lonely time of the year. Mm-hmm. So people kind of joke that, Oh God, they're doing jujitsu again. But I feel like it's providing a service for people. So we, we have people traveling from as far as like, to come to Stockport, where we are, from like North Wales, from Leeds, really? from yeah, honestly, on wow. Christmas Day, yeah, because they had nothing to do, maybe they didn't have anywhere to go, like, and they wanted to come and train, and, and that's I, like people through the jiu-jitsu network community that knew yeah. you were open, yeah, definitely, wow. yeah. So I, I think a lot more gyms are, uh, are doing it now, okay, um, doing a little session in the morning, but I think we were definitely one of the first in the area to do it, if not the first, um, and it was just again just out of a bit of a joke, really. Oh, let's do a class on the on Christmas Day. So, you know, we have a busy timetable. And as you know, like the guys want to train all the time. Mm. I want to train all the time. So we have classes on seven days a week. And since we have been in the current location, which is, you know, like three and a half years now, like, yeah, we've been open every day. And it's easier also to just say we're open. I get texts and messages and calls like, oh, are you open on Bank Holiday Monday? <laughs> it's like, yeah, like we're open on Bank we're Holiday. Open. We're open Christmas Day. We're open New Year's Day. Like we're open every like day throughout Christmas. So yeah, we're open on Good Friday. And you're pretty much there every day. Yeah, every pretty day. much. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. If, if, if I, if, if I can be, I'm there every day. Sunday is usually a little bit lighter for me. I kind of need, need to rest a little bit, yeah. um, but I still do a few private sessions on the Sunday, <laughs> um, but I do them offsite at, at, at another location. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, so so will, yeah. will we see another location at some no, point in never, the future? Never, never. Never. You're going to keep just one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I, I probably get approached once a year by really? another gym. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. What, like, wanting you to yeah, join? Yeah, like to affiliate. Yeah. Okay. For them to affiliate with us. Okay. So to come under the factory banner and to... <laughs> Um, yeah, to join. I mean, that's quite a natural progression for a lot of schools where they'll set up and then to kind of do their own thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, another gym, it's another part of the country will want yeah. to connect to them yep. uh, either for promotions and things. So like for belts and things like that. So, okay. you know, if someone set up a gym as a, say a purple belt, um, they're not allowed to give out certain belts as a purple belt. So oh, right. it's okay. just kind of like the etiquette and okay. like the, the, the way that our sport works. Okay. So for me as a black belt, like, you know, I can give belts out. So, ah. you know, I can give brown belts and purple belts and things like that. So it's easier for uh, a smaller gym to be able to connect and affiliate with a, with a, with a bigger one. Right. So, you know, we get asked again, probably once a year, we, you know, we get somebody asking if, if, if that's something we're interested in doing. And um, I quite like the idea that, um, we're one school and one club, and if you train, uh, if you want to train with me, it's at that at that club. Yeah. Okay. So when I do private, I, it's actually at someone's house, oh, so right. they have like a home gym set oh, up. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I train with them at their house. Okay. So I've been doing that for three years, so they're kind of like regulars of mine now, oh. um, so they have a pretty sweet like set up at the house. Yeah, man, that sounds yeah. awesome. So. Um, wow. So yeah, so, so those that, guys, those types of customers that do they train in the gym as well? No, no, oh, no, just okay. privately. Yeah, wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, I've got a couple like that who do private, just private sessions. Okay. Um, but before that, then I would still be doing the odd private session on a Sunday morning at the gym. So you know, I'm I'm pretty, I say, pretty busy throughout the week. I've always been that way. Yeah, you know, I, I can't. It's hard for me to sit still. Yeah, I like same. To, I like to do a lot. I like to stay busy and, and proactive, yeah. and I enjoy my job. So. I don't really see a need to have a have a rest from it, and and, yeah. and um, I know my body physically needs a rest some days, but there's always something to be doing in terms of running the business. So yeah, for me, um, yeah. So I think if I was to open up another location, it would only ever diminish the quality of what dilute we're doing. what you're doing, dilute what we're doing. Yeah. So it, 
it's quite unique because most gyms want to expand and open more locations and then also affiliate with as many different gyms as possible. So they kind of like power in numbers type thing. And, and it's really, really good. It's really useful for some people. So they're able to then connect with different coaches or yeah. like say get belt promotions or do seminars or whatever. But for us, you know, we're kind of, we kind of past that now. Like we don't really feel the, the need to do that. So. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it, I, I like the way you've got a clear ambition <laughs> for what you want for the future. I guess um, saying a, a particular size always has its benefits. Well, the thing is, we, I think everything we've always done has been, has been organic. I just remember one of the first times that I trained in America, like I remember going to someone's school and being really excited that I was training at their school mm. and then asked if that person was at the school and they said, yeah, he's not been here for months, you know, not been here for, like, and it was his school. Like, oh, it wasn't right. like it was an affiliate where you, you might see the head coach maybe two or three times a year. Like, you're not going to see the head coach at, like, all the little satellite schools, like, right. every day. They can't. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. But I went to this guy's, like, main school. He wasn't there. And I just felt really, like, disappointed about yeah, that. let down. And um, I, I kind of felt at the time it, it, it was it was a real lesson for me because even though um my school's you know um you know just a local school like i like the idea that if people want to come and train with me or train with uh, some of the the, the competitors at, 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 at my school they they come here and they're training with us so yeah. it's it's not confusing or anything like that like if you come to train with us like that's you're gonna cool. train with me like that's cool so yeah wow so yeah, I think um, I've really loved doing jiu-jitsu. I think um, it's a great thing to do, mm -hmm. anyone to do. Um, I think it's great what you're doing at Factory. I love the school. I want to see it grow and do better and better and better, which it is doing. <laughs> um, and my kids are going to get better. And um, yeah, thank you for coming in. I think this has been really cool to hear what you're doing, Adam. Yeah, no problem. Um, and yeah, we'll do it again. It's cool. I look forward to seeing it. Are you train tomorrow? I'm coming tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Camilla's away, but my parents are looking after the kids. So you can always bring the kids down. They can just sit. Yeah, on the side. I guess so. Yeah, they might be able to. It's a long time though between the classes. So that is true. I'm going to drop them off and I'm going to come back. Right. And I might take a break between <laughs> rolling this week. Right. right. So well, yeah. I'll so see Saturday. You, see you on the mat tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Please check out uh, Adam's School Factory BJJ over in Stockport. If you want to train, uh, come to the white belt classes and the intro class. Classes. Uh, yeah. He's on Instagram. Uh, what are your other uh, yeah, hashtags? Yeah, everything's pretty handles? much at Factory BJJ. Okay, um, we're dead easy to get hold of. You know, if anyone's unsure or not, sh you know, a little bit kind of nervous, come down. We're always open. Uh, come and watch your class. Come and hang out a little bit and uh, see for yourself. Yeah, cool. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye.